Hey everybody, this is John Bollinger in Nashville, Tennessee at the War Memorial. We are here with Ollie Herbert and Mike Martin from the band All That Remains. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Hey, let's, uh, let's start talking about some of your guitars. Okay. Uh, Ollie, why don't we start with uh, the guitar you're playing? Mm -hmm. This is a Jackson Warrior 27 fret custom shop in LA. It's got uh, neck through construction and uh, reverse headstock. Floyd Rose, uh, FU, which is uh, Adam Reaver's company, it's Floyd Upgrades. Oh. And we have titanium in here and uh, makes it sustain and resonate much longer. Okay. And you're running EMG? Yeah, 8185. As you see, I only have uh, one volume knob, so I don't need a tone knob because I'm playing metal. You know, right. Tone up all the way, all the time. Yeah, great. Perfect. Yep. And you were saying, so you... Um, you're using, it's a 27 fret guitar. Correct. But are you utilizing all 27? No, I mean, on the latest uh, release, I did a harmonized tap thing where I actually did hit the high G, just to say I could do it. But <laughs> I think I got the 27 so I can have access to the 24. I think on my next guitars, I'm going to go back to a 24 fret because I feel it's a, it's a little bit crowded up here for me. And uh, I like to have, not be so spacious down here. Right. Makes the neck longer, so. Sure. And big frets, right? Those are yes, uh, 25 and a half scale jumbo frets. Yeah. And is that an ebony fingerboard? It, indeed it is. Great. Is that your number one right now? Yep, this is my main guitar right now. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Well, while we're here, Mike, why don't we tell, uh, talk about your, uh, is this your number one right now? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Charvel uh, Desolation. Um, something I'd actually never even heard of until about a year ago, but I uh, came out with this new one here and... Uh, it was actually a lot more perfect for me than I uh, expected. Super simple, a lot like Ollie's uh, 8185 on the EMGs. And, you know, one volume knob, one uh, three-way switch there. Super simple. 24 frets. I don't need, uh, I don't need 27. But uh, sure. got the, uh, the locking tuners back here instead of the... Uh, I don't like to get too complicated with the Floyd Rose and the floating tremolos and stuff. So uh, just really basic and just an easy playing, simple guitar. I love it. Hmm, great. And are these active electronics on the... Yes. Huh. So you're both using active electronics? Yes, huh. have been pretty much forever. <laughs> Do you feel, when you're building your sound, are you think about complimenting the other guitarists? Are you, uh, or do you just build like your own tone, or do you think about what's going to work best with I think the... primarily we're selfish, and but uh, I've been trying, I was with a different company before, uh, and then I uh, heard his tone, and I was like, hmm, maybe it's time to kind of match that a little bit more. Oh, so yeah, I, cool. uh, you know. Setup, the setups are super similar. Like we use a lot from a lot of times we've had the same heads and yeah. the same pedals, and most of the settings are fairly similar. You know, if they're different, they're like you know a little bit off, but a lot of times it's pretty similar tones for us. Yeah, our, our hands are different, so that's what's going to come through. Yeah, sure, sure. So Mike, you're, this is your number one. In fact, it's kind of the only one you're using right now. This, yeah, well, I was playing. There's a I have a another version of this. It's the same exact thing, ex except it's like flat black instead of like the quilted finish. But uh, it's got a broken toggle switch on it right now, so I'm just uh, waiting to uh, get that switched out, and then I'll go back to being my number one again. He wants me to tell you why it's broken. <laughs> so I was angry on stage one night, and I threw it, and it broke. So <laughs> nice. very there was, rock and roll. There's one of those shows where like they make you go, like the tickets say seven o'clock, and then they make you go on at six forty, oh. and then you drink vodka, and you get mad. About about multiple things and maybe some like you know some buried emotions come up sure. or something <laughs> so yeah. we got we got done playing i just threw my guitar on the ground and i didn't tell my uh i didn't tell mike from charvel that story uh, yeah i didn't tell him that when i asked for the other uh, the new toggle switch but if he sees this yeah <laughs> sorry mike yeah. I didn't. I didn't mean it. It was somebody else trapped inside my body. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out Mike's an angry drunk. <laughs> yeah, see, I didn't. I didn't go to the. I didn't go to the gym that day or something. Is that what it was? <laughs> I don't know. It was. It was. A, it was the end of the tour. Yeah. So number two is now. Or now number one. Number one is going to be repaired. Yeah. Yeah. Number number one and two are very. It's all the same. It's exactly the same. It's just a different color. Ollie, let's hear about this. So is this your number two? Yeah, this was uh, originally my number one. It's had some uh, some issues with it that I just got resolved. So I might bring this back into rotation. But as you can see, it's a uh, crimson swirl paint job. Same setup with the pickups and, you know, obviously one tone knob or one uh, toggle switch. Now the inlays here, these are my custom inlays. These are Viking runes. 
Oh. And this stands for Rayado, which is uh, the journey. So I figured this was fitting since I've been, you know, in a touring band for 11 years now. And uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. So I hope to, on my future guitars, get different Viking runes on each one to kind of symbolize different things. And uh, maybe at some point we'll put them all together. And uh, so we're going for that theme. Yeah. Very cool. So do you come from Icelandic Viking stock? Uh, yeah. I got some Swedish in me. Yeah. You totally. You totally look like the Viking. Yeah. Rock and roll warrior. You can get a lot of <laughs> Yeah. They're looking for a fill-in, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not busy. Right, right. Well, pretty busy, but, you know. So it's cool that between the two of you, you're doing the Jackson and the Charvel, which is kind of the quintessential metal guitars. <laughs> Heavy metal. <laughs> so that is the 8185, which... Yeah, yeah, the, the old reliable, you know. Old reliable. Never have to... Uh, you don't really have to go with anything else. It's always the best one, no matter how many different things you try. It's always, right. it's always the best sounding one. Yeah. Do you have a lot of other guitars in your stable that you use in recording and don't take out on the road? We have a lot that we try, and then we end up going to the guitar with the 81 and 85 <laughs> right. every time. Yeah. I would consider trying passive pickups just to see, uh, you know, different tones and stuff. But sure. Pretty much I can rely upon what this is going to sound like. And yeah. Well, hey, let's, uh, let's talk amps and effects. All right, cool. Uh, we got the uh, 5153 here, made by Fender, which is uh, just awesome. And I had actually got it as a rental in Europe one time, and uh, didn't even realize how awesome they were until I had it as a rental. So played it all month, and then uh, after that, kind of realized I should probably make a switch with you know how much I liked them. I ended up be becoming buddies with uh, Wolfgang. Really? Uh, met uh, met him, and then met Matt, uh, another guy that works for Van Halen and works with Fender, and then got in contact with Mike Tempesta. Ended up hooking uh, hooking us up with all this good stuff right here. So, yeah, the three channels are awesome. The clean, the the cool. My favorite part about it is how heavy channel three, like the dirty sound, how heavy and tight it is. And then the clean channel, you know, when you take off the overdrive pedals and all that stuff and go to like a neck pickup, how clean the first channel is. So you're you're actually using the, the different channels. You're using the channel yeah changing. yeah. And on this tour, we're actually playing like a a, like a a power ballad kind of song that actually requires three channels. And the second channel has a really good like uh, kind of like a mid crunch like you know medium distortion. Sure. So that's really cool too. For the pedals, is super super simple. Just you know, Boss Tuner. Uh, the guys at Maxon are actually really great to us, and uh, they've been hooking us up with the overdrive pedals for a while now. Those pedals we don't use for like actually a ton of overdrive it's more just to tighten up the sound but mm -hmm. it's a night and day difference you can definitely tell when it's not on oh really does yeah. it add compression or just uh or uh, just it just kind of just like locks everything up yeah, more you know it's, it's, tightness it focuses the tone hmm. yeah so that's basically it you got, you got the noise gate you got the you got the noise gate the tuner and the max on that's it for me and running the sure wireless so it goes sure wireless into the uh into the tuner, into the Maxon, into the noise suppression, into the amps. Yeah, it's just a straight line. And are Super you, simple. Are you running both of those 5150s or is one a backup? Well, just one's a backup, yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't need, we're playing the venues we're playing, you don't need, you know, 10 cabs and three heads going, you know? Right, <laughs> yeah. right. I bet you guys are loud. Well, even Dimebag back in the day when he had those 50 cabs hooked up, I don't even think he had them all turned on. Yeah. Actually, he might have, but yeah. <laughs> nobody we else got, does. We've got we've got one cab a piece, you know. I, I could see us going to two cabs, like a full stack at some point, but, I mean, this is just a myth that you need all the, you know, the cabs are so freaking loud with, you know, right. lots of power behind them, and the PA is really what controls the house. Sure. All for show. Yeah. For the show. Yeah. Yeah, and they feel good. Yeah, yeah. It makes but you feel like yeah, a rock look, superstar. Not, there's not a lot of room on stage here, so you gotta, uh, you know, have your more space to move around. Like that's a little more important. Sure, sure. At least for us. Yeah, yeah. So, Ollie, you're running uh, a very similar rig, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got the MXR noise clamp for my uh, my gate, same Maxon pedal, and uh, the Boss tuner, tried and true. Okay. That's it. And the uh, the channel switching, you're doing the channel switching yep. as well? Right. In the studio, are you tending to use more effects or than? Uh, it gets added on after. Like yeah. you always record uh, dry, straight tone, and then they'll add like maybe some delays and reverbs, depending on what it calls for, you know? Sure. You don't want any notes to get lost or buried, you know? You want the intent of uh, your, your performance to come through. Right, right. And I mean, in that really fast stuff you're doing, you know, a delay could really muddle the the attack Correct. and muddle where the pocket is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, right now live, it's okay going dry because you know, like a room like this, it's very cavernous, uh, 
there will be a natural reverb in the room, so my lead tone will will cut through. I think okay. Sure. And tone is really you know it's in the hands. Yeah, yeah. What piece of gear, uh, aside from a guitar amp and pedals, could you not live without? I have my Korg PX5 Pandora's box. Oh. And uh, if you don't know what that is, that's a little modeling amp, little. Uh, you can record with it, it creates loops and stuff like that, and I basically write with it, practice with it. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful tool, headphones, so I don't sure. piss anybody off. So on the bus, you uh, can work with that or backstage? Yep. Great, yeah. great. Mike, what's your one piece of gear? You say no guitars and no amps? Without guitars and amps, what's Without aside your current rig here. Yeah, what's Without that? your current rig, anything we've talked about. Oh, man, I don't even have a real... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I would say those, those those Bowflex weights that I bring on the road, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just nothing nothing guitar related at yeah, all. Yeah. Just a bench and some weights so I can get some exercise during the day so I don't have to sit around all day. That would be my answer, yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us today. It's really been uh, been a pleasure meeting you both. Yeah, thanks for having us. Okay. Great. Thank yeah, thank you. Thanks.